What is up, guys? Happy Wednesday. Welcome to the Beard of Talk podcast. This is your host, Adam Mason. Uh, really exciting week for you guys. It's been really, really cool. We actually just had our uh, monthly workshop. We host free workshops every month in our Facebook group, Fulfilled Photographers on Facebook, if you haven't joined yet, or TOGFB.com, if you're not tired of me telling you all about that. Uh, it's an awesome Facebook group. As a guy who absolutely despises Facebook, I love to be there. Uh, and we did this free workshop all about kind of beating or standing out in the saturated market. And it was really cool. I feel like that's the number one thing that we hear from people who join our Facebook group is, you know, the market is saturated or my market is saturated, all this kind of stuff. And I'm just going to tell you straight up, guys, that is not true. That that is That does not exist. The market is only saturated when you're trying to be like everybody else. Boom. All right. Full stop. Uh, so yeah, we had that workshop in our Facebook group. It was really, really cool. But I want to give you guys a little little gift, okay? We are going to do that workshop. Uh, I have the audio recorded from the workshop right here in this podcast. So you're going to listen to it right now. It's uh, you know about 35 minutes long. It's going to be awesome. And so you guys are going to get access to that without being in the group. I would encourage you to, be, to join the group. It is free. But of course, you can always listen here. I think it's fun. I like to listen to uh, the same content in different ways or like I'll watch, you know, a workshop video, but then I want to listen to like supplementary content. So, uh, yeah, enjoy this workshop on how to stand out in your saturated market. Really, really cool. And guys, we have some baller episodes coming up in the next few weeks. It's going to be absolutely killer. I hope you're staying safe, staying well, wearing your mask, not getting COVID, not getting anybody else getting COVID. Hope you're being a responsible grown-up adult okay uh yeah so really really fun uh without any further ado here is our recording from the live workshop on how to stand out in your saturated market here we go Uh, if you're new here, we're talking about the saturated market and how to beat it. Uh, I personally don't believe that a saturated market exists at all. Um, we're going to talk about that. We're going to dive in. Uh, if you are new here, my name is Adam. I host the Beard to Talk podcast, weekly episodes every week from entrepreneurs, photographers, just like yourself, uh, and how they made it, how they're you know making business work, uh, including my story, also other kind of episodes, just practical things, whimsical things to help you with your business. Um, from an authentic standpoint. So, uh, yeah, Melinda, Jamie, love y'all. If you have ever heard of the saturated market or heard photographers talk about that, comment below. Uh, you know, if you've maybe experienced that, if you believe in something like that, uh, comment below. I will say I'm a little under the weather. So if I am a little bit slower to speak or out of, out of breath, um, this is just how it's going to be tonight. Uh, this particular episode, uh, or this particular topic is something that I thought I was going to only record a few minutes on, maybe 30-ish, 35 minutes, minutes. And then as I was writing, I was like, oh, this is like, this is a whole year long, you know, mentorship thing. And this is like what I te teach all my mentees is like how to beat the saturated market, how to stand out, how to separate yourself. Um, and so, yeah, I hear this all the time, conferences, emails, this Facebook group, this is the number one thing that people say they're struggling with when they join the group is a saturated market. Second thing is COVID-19. So we'll get to that. Um, and there's only a few people here. And so my biggest thing that I think about those people is that they want to lose. They're not interested in winning. Full stop. Um, I, I can no longer be romantic about this kind of education and stuff like that because we'll talk about this later. My mentees and people I've talked to and people who've even watched the workshop, um, you know, I've shown them what I've done. And I'm not a celebrity. I don't have 10,000 followers. I'm not, an I'm not an Instagram influencer. Uh, I've never shot for a celebrity that was big enough to skyrocket my success or anything like that. I have just been working day by day, month by month, year by year on good things that I know to be true, uh, all without ads. You know, we don't really do a lot of Facebook ads at all. Uh, mostly cause I suck at them. Honestly, uh, I know a lot of you guys do as well. And it's just, I'm into what effort can I do? And so uh, a lot of talk out there about, you know, creating a lead machine, you know, which I think is, uh, is a lovely idea. Uh, but we'll get this to this in a little bit. I'm interested in uh, a lead army, if you will. I call it the, the Mesa Photography Army, an army of people who are devoted to 
being ambassadors to you. So something you may have heard of um, Seth Godin's books. He talk, talk, I think it's called Tribe. Uh, and it's like, yeah, you're building a tribe, if you will, which is kind of like weird languages th- these days. But um, so, yeah, um, this is going to not be the most gentle way to say these things uh, because we're going to have to do some soul searching. If this resonates with you and you're like, oh, I want to beat the saturated market, we got to talk about it. So anyway, all that to say, more people should be in here because that is the number one complaint that people have or people biggest uh, thing that people want to talk about is the saturated market and uh, they don't want to talk about this. But what is the difference between Ford, Chevy and Dodge? They all make great cars, great vehicles, all make, uh, you know, fast vehicles. They make trucks, they make sprinter vans, they make minivans, they make all that kind of stuff. Um, you know, what's the difference? Are you able to tell a difference between these three? And unless you are a car person, an enthusiast, you really can't. And the reality is that almost all three brands, uh, and obviously we know there are more brands than those three, right? You know, obviously, um, they'd, it'd be a fine vehicle, you know, outside of a, a random recall or a lemon, which again, those guys have gotten their processes down. Um, whatever vehicle you chose, you know, brand new, if you will, uh, would be a fine fine vehicle as photographers that is the opposite of what i want for you that's the opposite of what i want for my brand i my uh, like one of my biggest goals is i do not want to be booked because i'm just another vendor it does happen you know but for me now how it usually happens is those are my most some of my most expensive clients who just say oh adam's work is different we love his vibe and we'll get to a lot of this um let's and they have a high budget and then they'll just be like yeah we trust him or it's like a planner's referral uh those things are great but most of my couples found me on instagram or found my site through seo or were referred by a venue or a fellow vendor who said this is your guy or they heard the couple talking about what kind of wedding they wanted to have and their friend said adam is your guy even when other photographers i know were in that conversation and they said no adam's the guy that's what I want for you. That's what I want for all photographers. I don't want us to all be another photographer in the sea of photographers. I don't want people to text me when a new iPhone comes out and say, Hey, are you scared about the market? You know, are you scared, um, of the iPhone or all that kind of stuff? Um, that is where I think I I feel no competition to that. Uh, and I even, I mean, I've had couples ask me if I feel any competition to other photographers in the DC area. Uh, and I don't because I believe in what we deliver, uh, and our brand is just different period. Like I don't focus on the other people. So I think that's going to be part of, part of tonight. Um, so yeah, all that to say, I don't believe the saturated market exists. Um, and I believe I've said this before, the market is only saturated when you're trying to do whatever else, everyone else is doing. All right. The market is only saturated when you're trying to be like water if you will, right? I'm trying to be a boat, if you will. I'm trying to be a cruise ship pre-COVID. Uh, you know, fun, packed, busier than you can handle, and uh, going places, okay? So there's my on, on the on the sea analogy, if you will, okay? That's what I want for myself and for other photographers is to be, you know, busier than they can imagine, right? And, and, and they get to choose how much work they'd like to take rather than having to take as much work as possible to save their families, you know, and COVID's a little bit of a different situation, but before that we were just turning away work. Um, and so that is where I want us all to end up. Um, it won't happen after this, after you hear this, but it will happen if you put in these, this work. Um, it is not enough to simply be different as a photographer, unless you want to be like everybody else. Most of our clients and potential couples, inquiries, whatever you want to call them, they couldn't tell you the difference between our photos uh, and somebody else's photos most of the time. Obviously, photographers that hear that and they go, whoa, that's crazy, or you think our clients are dumb, or something like that. That is not what I'm saying at all. But they are not as romantic about it as we are, okay? We're, we are professionals. We are past the level of enthusiasts. We are professionals at our specific kind of work that we really love. And so we're going to be really diehard. And if somebody said our work looked like somebody else's, we'd be like, ew, you're gross. 
but that is not the case um, for our clients. Your brand and how you stand out is not just your photos. One more example. If you live in a town with multiple coffee shops, okay? Like I live in a city. Why would you choose one over the other, right? They both have coffee. Let's say that coffee tastes the same. You know, let's say it provides you the same caffeinated value, if you will. It makes you feel the same way. It makes you feel good. It makes you like the product is the same, you know? And so, so stick with me. I know a lot of photographers are going to tune me out and be like, oh, it, we're not, I'm not the same. My work is different. Well, I have bad news. It's probably not, uh, or not different enough. If you will, there are some people where it is, but that's because of reasons we're going to talk about. They probably have a clearly defined brand and their photos match that. All right. For me, one of my favorite coffee shops in all of DC is very cool. Like it is very hipster. I'm not hipster enough for it. I think it's super cool. And it is a coffee shop where when I go there, the coffee is good. The product is good, but I also feel inspired. I feel excited about my job and my life and my work. And uh, th there's two coffee shops actually where I feel like this way. Uh, and my wife hates both of them and it makes me sad when she doesn't want to go here. But uh, they are very cool coffee shops. And um, there are other coffee shops in DC that we go to if, if we just need a coffee, right? You just need something uh, feels very corporate or feels very weird or just doesn't feel like me, right? Um, what the point is, is that so many factors go into our buying decisions, um, you know, and that is how we have to think about us, okay? It is not just the photos. It is not just the price. Now, Jamie, one of our people in our Facebook group who's watching this live, mentioned something about, like, charging very small amounts uh, and kind of giving yourself away, right? And even that, if there is intention behind it, I think somebody could do a good job at that. But yeah, most of the time, it's a race to the bottom. Um, but I don't think that those are business people who want to last forever. Uh, and at the same time, you've heard me talk about this before. If you got to do what you got to do, then you got to do what you got to do. All right. Um, but all the factors that go into a buying decision, we talked about uh, Sam's workshop. I cannot stop uh, praising Sam Jacobson. Um, but something I always heard from a good friend of mine, Sam Heard, he said, when everybody else chooses to zig i choose to zag and uh he said it in such a weird way and i was always like oh, this dude he's so weird um but that's the reality you know is can you separate yourself from the sea of what it looks like other photographers are doing and so we're gonna talk about three practical ways we're gonna get into it to talk uh to beat the saturated market okay to step out and to really not have to care about any of that stuff um to really just focus on your own stuff all right and this is where you're going to hate me. All right. The first thing you need a clearly defined brand. It doesn't have to be a hundred percent perfect, but you need to be heading towards that. Okay. I wouldn't even say our brand is a hundred percent perfect, but I'd say we're 90% of the way there. Uh, a good example of this is when a photographer says that they do everything right. Their website has eight categories at the top, right? Like family, seniors, weddings, engagements, portraits, headshots, dog shots, food shots, uh, you know, event photography, that person is not a specialist. That person does not have the skills possessed that I need for headshots or portraits or whatever. They are a generalist and that is not what I need, right? If you wanted a really nice leather couch, uh, you could go to Target or Walmart and maybe they have something or you go to like West Elm, Right. And they're like, hey, we have we have two couches on the floor today. Which one would you like? Uh, and they're both awesome. So good luck. Um, that is what we need to think about. OK. Another example is, is like Instagram uh, bios, which I get on you guys all of, all the time about photographer for couples in love photographer for uh, half passport will travel. Right. Um, lover of light and dance parties. OK. Those are not bad phrases, but I think the more that you make it about general wedding photography, the more you're going to look like a general wedding photographer. And as clients are looking at photographers, uh, the data says that they're looking at about five to 10 photographers, at least if they're in the luxury market. And if they're in the smaller, lesser uh, price market, they're looking at even more photographers when they go to shop. Um, sometimes you'll even know, like couples have a hard time keeping up with your emails because they've emailed 20 photographers. Cause they're just like, I just want to get prices. Right. Um, how will you stand out? 
how will you separate yourself from the pack? Instagram is an easy way to think about that. And you need to curate that throughout your entire branding experience. Everything from your website, your Facebook page, social, uh, your email signature, all that kind of stuff, right? Um, If you have not done the work on finding your why and why you exist in this world outside of photography, what is your mission in life? What do you want to bring to the world and why your brand exists when you feel like the market is saturated? then you will not get the clients that you want to get or at all, right? This is for people who maybe they're working fine, but they're not getting weddings that they like shooting, right? You've heard lots of podcasts. Uh, Tiffany Farley is, I think, Lauren Carnes on on the Bearded Talk, all about niching down, which uh, I think a lot of people will hear that and they think, oh, I can't make enough money niching down. But the reality is you make more money because you're an expert, Okay. And I would rather shoot 20 weddings at $10,000 than 40 weddings at $5,000 or 100 weddings at $1,000, right? I want to be a specialist, okay? Um, If you've ever heard of the ideal client, right? If you're watching this and you're like, yeah, I've heard that, but I, you know, it didn't really seem attractive to me. Or maybe you've seen a podcast about this. Not even for me, but just from anybody. Um, This is important. But I think for me where it gets lost is... I can kind of think about my ideal client, you know, maybe make a client avatar. You can say, okay, yeah, um, probably for most wedding photographers, it is a girl. It is a woman or a female identifying person. So you'd be like, all right, her name is uh, Brittany. Or maybe it's like a cool name. Like for me, one of my brand's names would probably be like Celeste or something, right? I think that's probably aligned with my brand. So her name is Celeste and she likes um, fashion, but she's not overly complex. She can also be fine with like, Netflix and she also has a job where she's passionate about um, you know justice and and helping people and bringing it to the world right uh, and maybe she's been through some trauma right like we're just being real um, what I think about that then you need to think about what does Celeste want to hear what are her fears um, when it comes to wedding planning what do they want to feel uh, on their wedding day right uh, what do they need to be assured of? will happen on their wedding day, right? Because they're nervous it's not going to happen. You know, people fucking hate getting their photos taken. So Facebook might put this down for me uh, cursing, but they just, people hate it. Most people hate it. What can you do to step in the gap for your ideal client and eliminate their fears ahead of time, right? So a lot of my clients' fears are, I want our photos to feel authentic. I want our photos to be timeless. I want our photos to feel uh, unencumbered by fear when people see photos uh, that i've taken of them it's not about photography technique or anything like that they want to feel like they are the the most true version of themselves right they're not holding back anything uh and i help them get them get them that way uh and that is my goal okay so uh, i'll give another example i have a mentee uh who you guys might know and, and one of her branding kind of mission things that we came up with was this theme of like joy and breaking the non-traditional or breaking the traditional kind of stuff. Um, And so I talk about her all the time, but we, I harp on her on her Instagram and on her site. Every time I go through it, every time she makes an update, I say, hey, does this align with joy? Does this look like it's breaking tradition? You know, um, I did a lot of work with a mentor a long time ago and we went through all my work and it was a lot of like what you see on my site now, and it was like dark and colorful and fun and vibrant and, you know, unique kind of couples and beards and uh, LGBTQ community, overweight people, just like uh, a variety, you know. And, and uh, you know, something I always said that my w- wedding photography was wedding photography for the rest of us. That's kind of my mindset, this rebellious mindset. And um, then I had a few photos in the portfolio that were just pretty bridesmaids photos or pretty couple portraits of, you know, basic white couple, which is totally fine. Um, but he just said, Adam, does that feel like the rest of us? Does that feel, uh, does that make those couples feel, does, is it obvious to them? Right. And that's the point guys, is that like, it needs to be obvious for the non-experts, if you will. All right. So what you do is you find your ideal client and then you ask, what questions are they asking? Uh, something you could do is totally write down your five favorite couples, uh, and talk to them. What do they need when they were looking uh, for a photographer, what were their fears when they were looking for a photographer? Um, 
what did, had they heard from friends and family about wedding photography that they didn't like, right? These are questions that you can even ask during the client booking process to show that you're going to solve them. So think, think of things that you're already good at that you specialize in and work backwards. Why do you do it that way? Not just because your hero said so or because I said so or somebody else said so, but like, how are you going to help them solve that problem? Okay. Uh, it's not just your photos. It is your message. The kinds of photos you post. Um, you know, another photographer thing, I, I, it's, it's hard for me, but I, I think it's, it, now that I've done this for a while, it makes me feel more comfortable. Uh, it is not your editing mostly, you know? So like, I'm thinking of like changing up our editing style a little bit. Only photographers will notice only me, our team, maybe our editor will notice most of our couples will not notice. Okay. Um, the first thing that couples see and feel from your site and social media is, is like, I hate this word, but like your vibe, what do you do? Um, your language, your colors, your online profile needs to fit and feel like something your ideal client would want. Okay. Even if it's not photography, if it just feels like a brand that they would be into, right? Guess what most of my clients either drive, wish they drove and what their favorite color is Tesla and black. I don't even own a Tesla, but all my clients know that I want one. Uh, stupid stuff, right? Jenna Kutcher, Mac and cheese, right? In my email signature, mashed potato lover. Just have some freaking personality, okay? Uh, obviously, it's much deeper than that, but like it all needs to align, okay? So like even that aligns with my like laid back nature, um, you know? So um, I've had multiple inquiries too will email me and they'll tell me what they saw in my site that made me want it, made them want to email. Uh, so it might be like, Hey, I love what you said about fear, or I love what you said about this or that. And that really helped me separate from the competition because like the other photographers are just photographers. Okay. All right. They're in the saturated market. I'm not in there. Uh, and that's, what's cool. And we still get general inquiries from couples that are like, Hey, what's your pricing? Um, so I think this is, uh, this is funny. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Jamie says IPAs. Love that. Uh, yeah, show a little personality, okay? Um, so yeah, that's a very short way to say branding, but like you guys need to get clear on your brand. Like if you are just, if you went to a workshop and they said, hey, pick three words that describes your work. That's great. But like you need to have some real language behind it. When you talk about it in your about section, don't tell us about photography. Tell us why it matters. Tell us why what you believe matters. Tell us why you exist in the world. What do you want your couples to come away with? Not just photo wise, but your impact on their lives generations from now. That is what freaking matters. Uh, try not to curse just in case Facebook wants to turn this down or uh, Apple podcasts. But yeah, think about all that. Do the work. For most of us, if we really do the work, it's a lot of tears. It's a lot of writing it down. It's a lot of notes. It's a lot of uh, scratching and clawing at it. But it's so worth it when all of your weddings feel like uh, dream weddings, when they feel like ideal weddings, right? Um, so do that work. If you need help with that, uh, I'm not going to sell you anything watching this or listening to this, but like mentorship from anybody, uh, client experience from anybody, wedding guides, uh, podcasts, etc. Like you need to dive in, but you also need to do the work. Okay. Listening to exercise information does not make us thin. Okay. Takes action. Um, second thing to stand out in your market. All right. Work and your images. Okay. So once you've done the work on your brand, all right. And you've gotten really close, then kind of like we talked about with, uh, the person who's into joy and breaking the traditions, you need to go back through your images with your branding, even in Instagram. If you love the captions, kill the photos and save the captions somewhere and like keep curating. I used to be a guy that showed everything I made and, uh, and for a long time, I was just another wedding photographer because I was like, oh yeah, I did this. This is cool. I'll, I'll shoot your wedding. Sure. The answer was yes. And the answer is still yes, but I want it to look like the answer might be no. Okay. Or it shows how much of a specialist I am in, you know, the kinds of weddings I want to have. All right. You know, um, do these images feel like what you said? And again, this is where like drop stuff in the Facebook group, drop five images, tell us a little bit about your brand and see if people agree with that. Like be open to critique. Like we want to help. I want to help. Um, feel free to email me or book a mentor session or whatever. Like 
this is the thing that photographers miss out on because it's the easiest thing to work on is like getting rid of images on your site and saying, nope, these three images are what I, what I value or these five or whatever. Um, for me, if you look at some of my work, a lot of that looks like, is it colorful? Both in the actual image, but also in how it feels. Like, is the moment that I'm I'm uh, documenting, does it feel colorful? Do people in these images, you know, notice I don't post a lot of details or landscapes because, like, I need people to sell people. Do they feel relinquished of their fears and true in the moment that I've documented them in? Okay, that is my filter for the images that I take and I look at and what I'm going to post. Uh, you need to be more critical work, critical of your work if you want to make more money. Okay. So again, mentors, friends, whomever, like text your best friend and say, Hey, what do you think my work looks and feels like if you want to do it backwards? Or what do you think of me and my brand? Like, who, what do you think I am? What, why do I exist? Like find help on this because it'll, it'll be worth it. Um, does that work feel like that brand? Okay. Um, and again, sorry. So I, uh, I'm losing uh, some of my breath here, but, um, last thing standing out in a saturated market. Okay. Guys is, is just effort putting in more effort than anybody else. Client experience. Okay. This is what most photographers do. Client emails, they book, they, uh, you know, take their money, take their 50% deposit or whatever you do. And then nothing until uh, a little bit before the wedding day for details, right? They, like they just talk about it or whatever. Nothing, okay? They book and then they book, okay? That's what a lot of photographers do. Just by you deciding that that's not gonna be how you run your business based on your branding, your work, and then your client experience, it's gonna be different for you, okay? Communication. What does communication mean? Like, oh, of course I answer my clients' questions and their emails, right? What are they asking? What do they need to know in advance? How can you set the tone for them? What information are you putting out there uh, and giving to them and putting in front of their face and saying, hey, this will help you have a wedding that feels and looks like what you've seen in my work and I wanna help you get there, okay? Uh, what nerves do they have that you need to uh, figure out and go after them? Again, what have they heard about other photographers that went bad, right? Like, I still, to this day, I have like two or three videographers that I really love in, in our area. I cannot recommend anybody outside of those three because videographer stories, I've always heard like they do not deliver all in time. This is, this is just easy money, guys. Answer your emails quickly within 24 hours. Do the things under promise and over deliver. Okay. Say it's going to take 30 days, deliver in 29 days, deliver in 21 days, 14 days, seven days, 10 days, you know, uh, whatever make it easy for them, right? Like for us, we don't do any watermarks. We make it really easy to book. There's no credit card fees because we think credit card fees are just for jerks. So just raise the price a hundred bucks or whatever. Um, client gifts, of course, right? Uh, having a customizable wedding guide, right? hundred pages. Uh, obviously we have our own customized one if you guys want that, but uh, I'm not going to try and sell that on you. Something that separates you from them. Okay. So if you're already getting the clients, you got to spoil them. You not like if they are your dream clients. So like take care of your dream clients and they, you'll create opportunities for social media because they're going to post it and go, Oh, our photographer is different. We did not expect this. Right. And then their friends see it and go, Oh, that's the guy. That's the girl. That's the person, whatever. Right. Um, they also will post all your stuff and then you're going to, uh, get more followers out of it. Okay. Um, you know, think of those kinds of things. Okay. So like I have a whole client gifts thing on Patreon about what I give to couples, but like, it doesn't have to be much, but that's just one way that you can kind of stand out effort wise, uh, branded everything. So like, if you do give out anything physical, whatever, like make sure it matches, put the work in. That's something I struggled with at the beginning. Do the design work after you've done the regular brand work. So, um, the other thing is communicate with our vendors, right? We'll talk a little bit about this kind of like luxury client experience stuff. Uh, reach out to the couple's vendors, have a big questionnaire that asks for their vendors, talk to all of them, tell them you're going to send them photos, tell them they can use them all, tell them they don't even have to credit you, right? Like make it easy for people to want to work with you, for people to say, this is 
that person that I want to be with on wedding day. Okay. Um, so yeah, all that to say, that's kind of the basic thing. I think your effort and your client experience is like a no brainer after, you know, I always say that Mace Photography sends 27 emails for every wedding couple. Uh, so we talk a lot, but I'm trying to get in front of their fears and get in front of, um, the things that they're going to ask. Okay. All right. Let's see. Uh, kind of wrapping this up, um, because I want to, I want to wrap this up. All right. Um, if all of this sounds good to you guys and you're struggling with somebody with standing out in the saturated market, or you know, somebody who says the market is saturated, I would love for you to send them this podcast or this workshop. Okay. So we're going to put it in both slots, uh, send it to them. I would love to know what they think. Um, secondly, if you want to go hands on with this and have somebody help you and guide you through this process, I am stopping mentorship indefinitely, but I have nine slots left. Okay. I have nine slots. So if you're watching this in the past, uh, comment game changer. If you want to learn more about mentorship, I will DM you all of, all the information about it, uh, how to book pricing, all that kind of stuff. And two hours, let's talk about everything. We'll do a brand audit or like a business audit about like where you're at and what, what do you want to do? We'll also do an SEO audit, see where you're at, what, in, what keywords you show up for, what are you doing? And then we can talk about anything. All right. I don't win. I don't do these videos, a podcast, education, all that stuff, client guide. I don't do any of this stuff unless it's going to actually help you succeed. And I want that for you. Again, if somebody like me can do it, you can do it. All right. So all that to say, I love you guys. Uh, If you're new here, subscribe to the Bearded Tog in your podcast player of choice or share it with a friend. I would absolutely love if you did that. Uh, Leave us a review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or wherever. I would absolutely love that. Uh, And if you want to follow me on Instagram, it is just at Mason Photography, uh, M-A-S-O-N Photography. I would love to hear from all of you guys. Uh, This has been an incredible workshop. Uh, And if you have comments or you disagree with something, comment below. I want to hear it. Um, But I truly believe these are the very basic ways that you can stand out from a saturated market. So, well, guys, I hope that was valuable for you. I hope that this brings you inspiration. If you liked that, if if it resonated with you or even up or you want to argue with me about it and say that it's not true, come join our Facebook group, TOGFB.com. I would love to hear your thoughts about this, questions, concerns, ideas. I want to help you with this. Again, as a guy raised in a small town by a single mom, kicked out of college, like now I live in D.C. with 20,000 wedding photographers and somehow we're successful, you know, so like standing out uh in the saturated market is possible and you can do it it just takes bravery it just takes passion it takes a little bit of effort so uh, i want to help you guys do that and i would love to help you do that uh as we head into booking season for most wedding photographers and uh let's get in there all right so uh if you haven't already subscribe to this podcast in your favorite podcast player whether that be spotify overcast apple Podcasts, etc we release new podcasts every week over 100 episodes so far from some of your favorite people. If you have any suggestions on who we should have on the podcast, who I should talk to, I would love to hear them. You can follow me on Instagram, at Mason Photography. Send them my way. Tell me what you like about them. Tell me why they're an interesting person. You know, that's my biggest thing with my curiosity is like, okay, what does this person do well? I want to find out. I want to talk about that expertise and then maybe like how they got there and do they know that that's like what they're known for. So uh, lastly, leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. It really helps the show. There's a few guests that we want to get on the show, but honestly, they have policies where unless you have a certain number of reviews, we can't get them on the show. And, you know, I can understand why. So if you have a free second, if you're on the toilet or something uh, or, or in an Uber, please go leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. That would be absolutely wonderful. And uh, yeah, look forward to hearing from you guys again. If you want to talk about the episode, hear anything, TOGFP.com. Come to the Facebook group, hang out. And uh, we've got an exciting rest of the year lined up so thank you guys so much have a wonderful day keep being awesome